Hey guys, welcome. One of the ways you can add value to your customers is with stellar staging services. And I'm very excited uh, because today we're gonna hear a lot about this. Stay tuned. Um, welcome to Realty Hack, where we look at the best practices that top agents and teams are employing to increase their production. Okay, my name is Ryan Rodenbeck, and today we're gonna to be talking about the benefits of in-house stagers and how you can get certified. As always, uh, be sure to like this video if you're watching it on Facebook. Uh, if you found this helpful, uh, type the comment agent below to subscribe to future broadcasts. If you're watching this on YouTube, like and subscribe to our channel. And as always, if you have top topics that you would like for us to cover, then uh, put it in the comment section below. Okay, so we're gonna bring in uh, Christy Barnett, AKA the Decorologist, and we're gonna be going uh, to be talking about staging essentials that agents need to consider in the heated Austin market. And today we're gonna be going over how the value of a home increases tremendously with proper staging, the potential loss in a home if it isn't staged and how agents can get certified or find a stager to help them with their business. So Christy, we have Christy here and let me just give a little bit of a, a bio on you. Christy is a design and color expert, home staging educator, author and speaker who has been blogging about design since 2009, um, expert psychological stager, interior decorator and creator of interior and exterior color palettes across the US she has written over 1,100 design articles and authored the best-selling book, Psychological Staging, The Home Staging Secrets of a Decorologist. Welcome, we're so, so glad to have you here. Thank you, Ryan, thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit how, how you got into this business and, oh boy. and you know, your past, you know? Right, well, um, my former career was as a school psychologist and I have two graduate degrees in psychology. So I was in that um, industry for uh, 10 years and then I took a break to have a couple of kids and then I just decided that I wanted to go a whole different route and I got into home staging and got training and started doing that. My husband was doing uh, real estate on the side um, at that point and so it really helped his listings and then um, I just decided to go all in and and um, so that's where the decorologist came from. It's a little bit of the decorating design part and also the psychology because I really have a um, my whole system of staging is based on psychology. And and did you kind of create that course? I did. I did. Okay. Um, and yeah. certification, right? After, after 15 years of staging, um, I I realized that what I was doing had really become very different from what I saw other stagers doing, and I, I really had you know kind of developed a system, a really systematic. Um, way of using the, the science and psychology of visual perception to change how people looked or perceived the size of rooms and and you know how it drew you know how to draw the eye to the architecture instead of the decor and those kinds of things and also just emotionally dealing with um, sellers um, who are very stressed out about selling their home and sometimes it's a little tricky to get them to take your recommendations. So, um, so yeah, so we, we started the staging training company, Expert Psychological Stager, um, almost, let's see, four and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I wanna kind of tell you how, how I tell the audience here how, how we, we met each other. I mean, you and I actually haven't actually met each other, but well, we've been following you for a long time. So, you know, what's interesting is, you know, back in like 2000 and, uh, uh, 9 2010 I decided that I wanted to become a top producing listing agent and I was just gonna figure out you know any way possible that I was gonna do it my wife was a CPA um, she was kind of burned out on that we wanted to work together um, so at that time um, back then we uh, drove to Frisco and she took a, a course there uh, like a one day course in, in Frisco and it, it was good stuff. It got us started. Right? right. So, so, you know, we were able to increase our listing production. Uh, we were able to add value. You know, it, it was interesting kind of the evolution of our business. And then um, when I think the way this went was when Sunny came on board, we wanted, we were doing so much staging stuff that we wanted to uh, get her certified. 
And Angel, my wife, actually started following you on social media, reading your stuff, became a, a big fan. And so we decided to get Sunny in Nashville. And my wife was like, well, I want to do this too because I follow this lady. She's really great. So we sent both of, uh, of them to Nashville. And they, I think it was a two-day two course at the time. It was, it was three day. Uh, well, it's three days. Yeah, it's two days yeah. in class, intensive in class, and one day where we're actually staging a home. Yeah. And so my, my wife follows your blog and, you know, your social media like crazy. So and we refer to I think she's in the group refer to you for for advice. But let's get to the questions here. Okay. So um, what are the benefits of adding staging for an agent to the listing? And are there different types of, 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 of staging services? Absolutely. Well, it's, you know, it definitely gives you a competitive edge among other realtors. If you mm -hmm. provide that service, um, it's, it's an added value, obviously, um, if you have that as part of your, of your listing service. It's you know, kind of similar to realtors who provide professional photography. Um, it's just kind of that extra thing. But for staging, I mean, staging makes you more money. And yeah. so, um, you know, statistics tell us that staged homes sell in a fourth of the time as unstaged homes. Um, and they sell for more. And so, you know, naturally, because we know that the sooner the house sells, the closer to listing price you're going to get. That's a lot of it because they are more competitive uh, compared to other houses similar. Um, and so they're going to sell quicker, quicker. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you think about it, like after the house is on the market for a month, um, your listing, your, um, your, your, price that you're going to get is is about five uh, five percent less than listing right so mm -hmm. if you have a, a five hundred thousand dollar house and you it, it sits for a month you're going to lose twenty five thousand dollars so mm -hmm. staging is going to keep that from happening and then also the average savings on carrying costs if your home is staged is like twenty seven thousand dollars so it's a lot of money yeah, and we can attest to that too. I mean, in a lot of examples. And what's interesting is when we started this, we started doing staging. We we started in a down market, and you know, our, our goal years ago is like, okay, we're going to offer this for free, but then one day we're going to charge for it, right? Um, that never happened, and it never happened because it, it's a for a self serving reason. Like it's such a benefit. If someone said that they didn't want to pay for it, we still wanted to do it, right? Right, so, because it's good for you as well as them. Yeah. And so now like two years ago, we started offering that service to our agents and they're seeing this benefit. But even like last December, we had a duplex in 7704 that was listed for like two months. The agent couldn't sell it. Um, I think they had it for like 625. Right. And mm -hmm. then um, uh, they dropped it to 600 and then they took it off the market. She contacted me. I said, let's let the three days on market reset. We staged the home, Sunny staged the home, did a beautiful job. And then we got 624 when we relisted it. So that's right, just like the crazy. proof is in the pudding. Um, yeah. So, how would an agent, um, well, so we, we, we talk, do you have any examples besides me of any brokerages that um, offer any, uh, you know, renovation services? Or have you heard of anyone doing that? Well, here in Nashville, um, I know of one that does, and they're um, relatively new to doing that. But, um, you know, that's not typical. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, if that's something that you're able to provide, I think that's huge value added because, you know, in combination with having to list the home and get it ready to sell for a seller to have to deal with contractors and handymen and, and all these things, mm -hmm. um, it, that's a great advantage if that's something that you can offer. Okay. And I'm going to go a little bit off script here because my wife wanted me to ask you this, but like, um, what are the hot colors of this year? <laughs> oh boy. That's a loaded question. Um, this is what I say. There is no go-to color. There's mm -hmm. no one color that solves all problems. Um, we are still, you know, in the gray trend to some extent in terms of neutrals, but, you know, certainly, uh, you know, grays, which is gray beiges, um, are also uh, popular. I, what I'm seeing in the last year is that those neutrals are getting a little lighter than they were a few years ago. So, um, so we're lightening up those neutrals for sure. Um, you know, obviously white is big, uh, kind of that farmhouse look kind of depends on what part of the country you're in, but you don't want to go all white all the time because that can look pretty dead. 
um, in a lot of homes too, depending on yeah. architecture. Yeah, and, and talk to me about psychological staging versus what we commonly refer to as staging. Because I mean, this yeah. is this is when 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 Angel and Sonny went to that that your, your course, it, like there was a lot of. I mean, it was really elevated compared to what we already knew. You know, so what, yeah. talk, talk about that. Well, I think there's just the misconception is that staging is decorating and it's so not it's marketing strategy. And, um, you know, so I, I know there have been brokerages that I'm aware of where there's been maybe there's a team member, a, a listing agent who has a wife who likes to decorate and she comes in and stages um, mm -hmm. the houses and decorating is not staging. And that's it's, it's not the same thing. So we want to uh, depersonalize and make it appeal to a very wide audience. And um, and so that's one thing when I go in and do a staging consultation, I try to explain to the seller, this is not about your decorating. Your decorating is beautiful. Your home is beautiful, but we want to, this is a marketing strategy. And yeah. so we're going to try to do things that meet specific goals. And some of my goals are to make every space, every room appear larger than it does when we go into the space. And there's lots of ways that you can arrange furniture that um, and arrange art and use paint color to visually expand spaces and make people yeah. think the room is bigger than they thought it was, than it truly is. So it, it's like we're manipulating the visual perception. Yeah. And especially when you walk in that room and there's a wraparound couch that just takes up the entire room, you know, yeah. um, we, we, we have a, a storage room full of stuff that, um, that we use and, you know, we have about seven couches, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's just, it's one of those things that like, that's the most common thing is like telling them, look, just put your stuff into uh, the a garage bay or in storage or whatever. And, 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 you know, this one thing, if nothing else, will, will help it out as well. Sure. Um, and do you, you typically, when you're doing staging, do, do you recommend uh, paint color changes? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. In my training, a big part of my training is in paint color. And that's something that that it was not the case when I did training. Um, and a lot of stagers really don't even know um, how to how to do paint color consultations. So I, but I think that's really, really important because um, color accounts for 90 percent of dis, of consumer decision making which yeah. is crazy, right? Uh, it has so much more influence than we think. And even though a lot of people think, well, somebody can repaint this. Uh, most people can't see past what's there. And yeah. so it's important for us to, to get it to a place. And, and I mean, in a reasonable way, I don't typically go in and tell people to change all of their paint colors, mm -hmm. but maybe in the main living areas in the main entry and living areas, if it's a dated dark color, it's going to make the place appear smaller and, um, and less welcoming. And we just need to, to, it, it can update the entire space. Yeah. And, and, and these colors in, you know, they change over time, right? They do. I mean, they do. what do you think the lifespan of a, of a, of a trending color is like six or seven years? Yeah. Six or seven years, um, you know, on the high end up to 10 years, but, um, you know, yeah, they, they change five to 10 years. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. And we're, we're, we're about, I think we're going to do a document, a good example of this because, um, we have, uh, we own six duplexes and one of them I'm about to, to unload and, uh, the outside of this duplex, we, we did it with the trending colors of six or seven years ago. Yeah. And, um, it's almost like, a you know, a darker beige, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Um, and, and it just, you can tell it's just not really in and, right. and we want to like have that property really pop because especially when it comes to duplexes that, that, you know, that you've got tenants in there. So oh, yeah. you, you can't stage it very, you, you know, you can't ask them to stage it. You guys going to keep it clean or whatever, right, but right. Even that, you may not get that. So right. we want to have that pop. Talk about sure. the uh, outsides of homes. Is that, that's, I mean, one thing you talk about is your first impression, right? Yeah. Yeah. And first impression is like, you know, they used to say your first impression is made in the first 15 seconds. It's really like in milliseconds. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, and it, you know, it's visceral. You feel yeah. it before you actually cognitively process it. And so, yeah. you know, you, it's so, so important. Um, so the exterior, certainly the first thing you see when you walk in a house, you were talking about duplexes and it just reminded me of um, a couple that I worked for years ago who had a duplex and there were, you know, uh, I don't know how many homes were duplexes were in their complex, 
but there were three others that had been for sale for like six to nine months. And here they come in and they've got a lot of competition and they really need to move and they need to move fast. And I came in and gave them a fresh on trend color scheme yeah. and their theirs sold immediately, like within three days. Well, and those other, and it, would, it was just like the others, but yeah. because we updated the, the paint colors, it changed the entire look and made such a difference in the MLS pictures for sure. And in that first impression when buyers came in the door, comparing it to those others. Yeah, and we 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 sell a decent amount of duplexes, and you know you can tell the difference of our duplexes. I mean, they look so much differently. Like yeah. uh, you know, e even if it's just the outside, what we sure. typically like to do with a duplex is have one side vacant so that a we can you know do a fresh paint color. We like to put quartz and duplexes in areas yeah. where it's not in there. You know? Exactly. Um, and then we'll stage that. And then so not only is that duplex appealing for an investor, but it's also appealing for an owner occupant because they yeah. can afford more because they can use the rent towards their income. Um, and then, then one more thing, you know, I, when when you talked about the I've heard that a lot, like the buyer knows if they want the home within the first 15 seconds. Yeah. My, my, here's my unqualified or partially qualified opinion on that. The, I think I would I would love to change that saying to saying a buyer knows that they don't want the house yeah. within 15 seconds. Right. I, I've gone through the, you know, going into the house and if it's just staged awfully, you yeah. know, there be, so I can tell I have, they have this look in their face like I don't want to go see the rest of the house, but uh -huh. we're already here. So let's do it. So, so Ryan, that's so that's so interesting that you say that because what you're describing is something called confirmation bias. So uh, when you go in to a home or, you know, it's, it's in any decision, right? This is in politics. This is in all kinds of things. We have our opinion. We, we make that that judgment and then we want to stick with it and we want to find things that reinforce what we believe. And so if I've already decided I don't like the house, I'm going to start getting super critical and going around and looking for all the flaws and all the things that aren't good. And in the same way, if a, if a lady walks in the house and literally falls in love at first sight, which yeah. I did, I did when we moved into our home, um, then I'm going to find every way to overlook some flaws, you know, yeah. oh, well, okay, it doesn't have this, but you know, it has this. So yeah. yeah, it's 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 very psychological, and that's why it's so important to to have the, these tools in your arsenal, which leads us to uh, I believe our last question. So okay. how can an agent? Um, how do you recommend an agent find a, a, a good stager to refer to sellers? Okay, this is so important, Ryan, because there are all. Uh, Let's see. How can I say this? There are good stagers and they're not so good stagers. Mm -hmm. um, the staging industry is not a regulated industry. So anyone can hang up a shingle and say they're a home stager. Yeah. So you need to understand, first of all, um, are they a hobbyist? Are they, you know, are they, did they read a book about it and decide to do it? Did they go and get training? Uh, there's online training. There's live training. Ours is a, a three day intensive live training. Um, yeah. And so you need to figure out, you know, how they learned how to stage. You next yeah. need to figure out what kind of services they offer because there are different kinds of staging services. There's some people who only do staging consultations. And um, I highly recommend if you um, hire a stager to do a staging consultation, they need to do a thorough consultation with the client. And then they need to provide a written report for both the agent and the client. Um, because these checklists and these, oh, you take notes while I tell you what to do in 30 yeah. minutes. That is, you do not get follow through. You don't get buy in. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's real important. Some, some stagers only do what we call occupied staging. And that means, you know, the buyer lives in the home and they bring in props and rearrange their furniture and do that kind of thing. And then others specialize in vacant staging for empty houses where you do rental furniture. So you need to find out if that stager, you know, what services they provide. Um, and then the other thing is you really need to ask them to see their before and after portfolio. You yeah. need to see what they're capable of. Um, yeah. That's that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. What, what, what's interesting with that is that's been a big part of our marketing for, you know, my, but my listings and for, for the agents listings is like for the past several years, when I go into a house, I'll go in, 
because you know you want your portfolio to look good right so i'll go in with, with this you know this camera right which is admittedly not good and this is the right. before version right mm -hmm. and then the after version uh, is with the, you know professional photography yeah. and, and wide angle lenses and it, it just makes the world a difference and it adds so much clout and i thought that was the last thing but one more question how can an agent or an agent's assistant or someone on their team get certified to stage homes specifically let's let's not talk about your online courses let's talk about with you how can they do okay. that well <laughs> um i offer courses three times a year um, i have one coming up next month in march march 14th through 16th i still have a few slots left i think we have four seats still available um but it's here in nashville which is a great place to visit um if you like austin you'll you'll like nashville um, but anyway, um, we, we offer that live training. You can go to my website at the and go to the tab that says learn from me and you'll see a drop down and you can find out more about that course. But regardless whether you do something like have somebody come to my course or to another course, you need to, to look at is the training program accredited by the real estate staging association. Okay. Um, because again, just like there are different kinds of stagers, there's all different kinds of training. Um, and so you want to make sure that you, you have one that's accredited. Gotcha. Well, this has been great. We're huge fans of yours. My wife just like, you know, follows you constantly, reads everything that you write, everything you put out. Um, so thank you so much for being on our broadcast today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, for those of you watching, uh, Kelly is going to be putting links to her site um, in, in the comment section. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's going to be in uh, the description below. Um, and don't forget, if, if you like this video and you're watching this on Facebook, if you found this helpful, be sure and type the word a comment agent below to be subscribed to future broadcasts. Once again, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you have any suggestions, feedback, comments on anything that we've covered today or any questions for myself or Christy, please engage with us and we'd be happy to uh, you know, answer any questions for you. Christy, that's a wrap for today. And uh, this is one of my favorite episodes. Thank you so much. I really Thank appreciate you, it. Thank you, Ryan. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.